Round one of indictments are out, and so far at least three past Trump officials have been caught up in Robert Mueller's dragnet. Former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort and campaign deputy Rick Gates both turned themselves into federal officials this morning, where they pled not guilty to all the charges against them, including conspiracy against the U.S., conspiracy to launder money, unregistered agent of a foreign principal, and false statements. But as the White House was quick to point out, today's indictment made no mention of Donald Trump, nor anything that happened during the 2016 campaign. Look, today's announcement has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with the president's campaign or campaign activity. We've been saying from day one there's been no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, and nothing in the indictment today changes that at all. Now, while that may be true, we also learned today that former Trump foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos pled guilty to making false statements to the FBI about conversations he had during the election with a Russian professor on supposed dirt that Moscow had on Hillary Clinton. As it turns out, Papadopoulos was arrested back in July and has been cooperating with Mueller's team ever since. So are we nearing the end, as the White House keeps saying, or could it be just the beginning? Joining me are Natasha Tidwell. She's a former police officer and federal prosecutor, now works at Hogan Lovells. Did I say that right? You did. Thank okay. you. The <laughs> same firm where he of handlebar mustache fame, Ty Cobb, was a partner in Washington, D.C. until he joined the Trump administration in July. Nice to see you, Natasha. We're also joined by former U.S. Attorney Donald Stern, who worked alongside Mueller, both during his stint with the Department of Justice and in private practice at Hale & Door. Don, it's good to see you. And Dan Small, a partner at Holland & Knight, who served alongside Mueller at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the 80s. He also made be the only attorney who's defended two different governors against corruption charges. Is that correct? As far as correct. So let me start with you, Natasha. If you're Donald Trump, do you sleep well tonight or do you not? Well, I think you don't um, in Why? terms of the Papadopoulos uh, information. I think that that was sort of the big story of the day in terms of the campaign because it's clear as the uh, information reads in the plea agreement, he's cooperating with authorities and probably has been since July. So I think if I'm Donald Trump, that's who i And I'm he has a Russian about. connection. And he has a Russian connection. It brings it back to the Does campaign. he sleep well? Is he worried about Manafort flipping or is he not? Well, I, you know, I think there probably is some worry about Manafort, but I, I agree with Natasha. Kind of the, the first flurry of press focus solely on Manafort, and I think that's a big story. There's no question about it. It's a, a very comprehensive, uh, interesting indictment. But the, uh, the Papadopoulos in information uh, suggests one thing. First of all, it's, it's clear by his admission, at least, that there were ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. Even though we don't know how high up. We well, there's reference to the fact that he was reporting on what he was doing to supervisors. But we don't know Trump who that campaign. is this moment, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't know who it is, and there's a reference to the fact that he participated in at least one in-person meeting where Trump was, was present. But, but, but the second thing is, and just to pick up what Natasha said, he not only has been cooperating, but that cooperation has actually been, not been public for many months. So what we don't know is, does the cooperation consist only of simply debriefing? Or has his cooperation been proactive? Do you make it unanimous here? No, I think if you don't understand in the White House that this was a message day, mm -hmm. you're missing the boat. With the Manafort indictment. With both indictments. Uh -huh. The two ways you go after a criminal conspiracy, if there is one. One is by following the money, and the other is by following the lies. And by putting both of these together in one day, that's a clear message to everybody, everybody who's done funny things with money and everything one who's done made funny statements that you're next. So so. Just, can we start with Manafort for a second, just so it's clear that people at home are clear. A lot of people focused on the word conspiracy today. But the conspiracy they're talking about is about money, and it's not about anything to do with the Trump campaign. Is that not correct, uh, as yeah, far as we know? That's correct. But the, the flipping, it, it seems to me as a layperson that... that Mueller's been particularly aggressive with this guy. This is the guy where he could have, a few months ago, have gotten a, issued a subpoena. He instead got a search warrant and goes into the guy's house at like 6 o'clock in the morning. So he is trying to make people nervous. Manafort was also at the infamous Trump Tower meeting in June of 2016 where Donald Jr. and, and, uh, and uh, Jared Kushner were allegedly about adoption, but we know it, it wasn't. While his lawyer says he doesn't have anything to give, there's huge incentive for him to turn on his former boss, is there not? There certainly is. I mean, he's facing significant time. With Decades, just potentially. Well, I mean, a lot of this, the charges will group together, but it's okay. at least 10 years, and who knows how much more on the foreign registration uh -huh. if that adds uh, to his sentence at the end. But I think that with, uh, with the Manafort and, the, and Mueller, I think going after Manafort and trying to get him to flip, it's 
from the indictment, it seems like Ukraine is the focus. And where you have at the Republican National at the convention, the sort of the change in the platform favorable to Russia that involves Ukraine and Crimea, I think that is sort of the way that Mueller, you know, it seems to be from the indictment is looking at Manafort's relationship with Ukraine and taking that going forward. And, how and he was representing pro Putin, pro Russian That's forces correct. in Ukraine. But, you know, explain to me, Don, if you can, for a second, if they cut a deal of some sorts with Papadopoulos months ago, because mm -hmm. the assumption is he's willing to talk, should we assume if they didn't cut a deal with Manafort that he wasn't willing to talk, at least so far? Is that true? Well, that's. Probably the case. You know, we've all the three of us have been on both sides, we've been prosecutors and defense right. lawyers. And I have to say, uh, it's pretty clear when you, you know, switch sides and you become a defense lawyer, there's nothing that will focus the attention of an individual than an indictment. You know, people will, will always pre indictment say, we're going to fight this thing, it's crazy. But everything changes. Well, from well the it day. changes. And, you know, and, and one of the things I heard just as I was coming in uh, to the show is that the government moved that they be confined, get home confinement. Oh, I wasn't aware yeah, of that. So they have home what does that mean? What should that mean? Well, it's unusual in a white collar case. So what does it mean? Well, it means that the government wants them to be paying very close attention to the consequences of this case. Can I understand one thing? Even if, there, well, earlier today, someone on the behalf of President Trump said, I'm not pardoning anybody. Even if he did pardon these people, there's still state charges that potentially could be brought against the Manaforts of the world. So they wouldn't be scot-free. Am I not right about that? Well, it, it depends. It's interesting. They did, there was some uh, stories a while ago that Mueller was working with the New York State authorities uh, but they came out with these indictments without the state, so potentially there might be state. But when you're talking about money laundering, that that's a that's more of a federal crime. And and here the pressure, uh, I agree, is extraordinary. The money laundering for 75 million dollars is off the charts in terms of the sentencing. Can we move to Papadopoulos now for a second? You know, I, I, I am not shocked anymore when the president says something that I think everybody on the planet knows and is in direct contradiction to the reality, to fact. But when there's a criminal case pending, not against him, here's Sarah Huckabee Sanders today on Papadopoulos' role in the Trump for President campaign. Listen to her if you would. It was a volunteer position, and again, uh, no activity was ever done in an official capacity uh, on behalf of the campaign in that regard. And she was reading part of that, so obviously this is what she's supposed to say. And we all know, or if we didn't know before, we learned today at a March 21st uh, uh, editorial board meeting in the Washington Post, Donald Trump has asked, can you name your key foreign policy advisors? He only names five, mm -hmm. five for the whole campaign, and one of the five is this Guy, is this is Papadopoulos? I mean, it seems to me you dig even a deeper hole for yourself. I, I don't want to call it lying, but when you're m messing with the facts and you're the presidential spokesman, am I wrong about that or no? Well, I think the, the sort of the operation is to distance themselves as much as they can from whoever sort of comes up in the but news. But it's in so, direct contradiction to but the that facts. Doesn't stop, but that's not. Don't let that get in the way <laughs> of what we're yeah. saying today. Yeah. And I yeah. think Manafort was just a guy who was helping them with delegate counts, and this guy was unpaid. He's just a volunteer and he's someone else. Pretty sure I'm pretty sure Jared Kushner will just be a guy Ivanka dated, you know, <laughs> in high school when by you, the time we're done. So. Well, if you had a similar moment when you were the U.S. attorney where there was this kind of public statement that was in direct contravention to reality, did that what that do to you, or did you just play it straight down? You know, the line? I, 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 initially it was like, what are they talking about? You know, the defense lawyer goes out on the courthouse steps and say this is all trumped up, it's politically motivated. After a while, I just sort of. It goes with the territory. And, and the thing about Mueller, you know, he, he is, he's assembled not only the A team, but the A plus team. This background noise, Jim, these tweets, these comments from the press secretary, Today, I don't think uh, he cares at all about it. You know, what happens here? Uh, what's next with this, this Papadopoulos case? The assumption is he continues to cooperate, to talk. Is that a likely scenario? Well, presumably his cooperation is at an end, which is why they brought the charges. I see. Okay. You know, he's given them what he has. And uh, as Don said, we don't know what else that cooperation entailed. What's fascinating about Papadopoulos is that the interview was in January. There are a lot of people in Washington right now scratching their heads, thinking back, what the heck did I say okay. to the FBI? Well, when he lied to the FBI, yeah, when he was, lied in to the FBI yeah. was in January. Yeah. Yeah. And they did a lot of interviews back then, and it's not that hard 
uh, to bring more 1001 false statement cases. You know, and by the way, we should just say, well, we don't know who those supervisors were. The guy in charge or one of the people in charge of foreign policy is now the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff uh, Sessions. Can we change gears? Can we go back to Sarah Huckabee Sanders again, suggesting the real target should not be her boss and anybody involved in the campaign, but people involved in the other campaign. Here it is. The real collusion scandal, as we've said several times before, has everything to do with the Clinton campaign, Fusion GPS, and Russia. There's clear evidence of the Clinton campaign colluding with Russian intelligence to spread disinformation and smear the president to influence the election. There's no clear uh, evidence, as she said, of colluding with the Russian intelligence to spread disinformation. There is clear evidence that they were engaged in an effort to get information to smear the candidate Trump at that time. Is that a crime? For those who don't know, uh, the notion that both the DNC, Democratic National Committee, and the Clinton campaign spent money to fund this opposition research through a steal, who we all, the so called dossier. Is there a crime in there somewhere that we're missing, or is there not? Well, if there's a crime in opposition research, you'd have a lot of exactly, but, consultants in jail. Not that we know of. But, yeah, they, but so, who knows? But you, say, you don't see it. Is there a crime in here, or no? Well, in, in, in what. The, the, in what. In, in, in paying for this if you, thing. If you paid for someone to do opposition research and so far as you know it was done legally in other words you didn't you didn't conspire to, to for them to that do something fine. illegal but that here's the fine. thing that it seems to me that where they got themselves in some trouble is that both uh, John Podesta head of the campaign which funded in part this Debbie Wasserman Schultz the head of the Democratic National Committee go in front of Congress and say we don't know anything about any payments which at least to me really strains Credibility. I don't know if they were under oath at that particular time. If they were, they'd be in deep trouble, and and that could be a problem for them. Could it not? It's not possible that the leaders. Well, it's possible. It's not likely the leaders of the campaign and the Democratic National Committee didn't know that a ton of money was going out to this whatever it's called Fusion GPS. Is it? Well, I mean, I think the operative word is or phrase is plausible deniability, right? And as long as they have that, that they're sort of protected. No one has clean hands here, um, but I think you know the point being what's criminal and what's sort of but dirty politics. We only have thirty seconds, but I don't think there is plausible de deniability. John Podesta at that hearing was sitting next to his lawyer, mm -hmm. who works for the firm that wrote the check to Fusion GPS to pay for the research. Is it passed the laugh test that he I, didn't I, know? I, I, I don't know. All I would say is if they were. Lies made in congressional testimony, those should be investigated. But, you know, the, the same press secretary that's talking about this, trying to deflect attention, is saying that the president, then the president-elect, had no knowledge that his son-in-law was meeting with operatives of the Russian government to get, quote, dirt on Hillary, which they knew included emails that the Russian government had. Correct. So you can't have it both ways. Well, they're trying. Nice to see you both, all three of you. Natasha, Great be well. Don, okay, thank yeah, you. Thanks. Dan, thank you for thank your you. time. Appreciate it, all three of you.